Hello, everyone. This is Reb Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. If you're a podcast regular and you've been listening to our Lesson from Lasso series, then you can go ahead and skip ahead a minute and a half to start the pod for the day. Well, it's been almost 25 years for me as a volunteer chaplain and press officer in and around professional football, soccer, as we like to call it here in the U.S., And with that in mind, I've been offering this occasional series entitled Lessons from Lasso, essentially giving a chaplain's perspective on some of the things we see in the hit TV show meshed up with my own experiences in the game. All the while trying to be careful not to over-spiritualize what's on the screen, but commenting on some of the elements I believe can be great points of personal and professional development, no matter what your role or relationship with soccer. So whether you're an athlete, a coach, a staff member, or executive, or even a fan of soccer or of the Ted Lasso show, I hope you'll find this series fun, creative, and having a little bit of everything for everyone that's in and around the game. Thank you for listening to the From the Touchline podcast. Here we go with another lesson from Ted Lasso. He's found the space, and he's found the back of the net. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in. And they have, he has the hat trick, the second in his career, the third of the night, the hat trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner, goes towards the near post, and you're the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! If there's a tearing moment to be had in the first season of Ten Lasso, The one we're talking about today is first, if not tops of the list. Season 1, Episode 4, and Lesson 30 in our Lessons from Lasso, we walk with Coach Lasso to the back alleyway during the fundraising gala to find the typically stoic Rebecca having a moment. Lasso soon realizes Rebecca is struggling. The caustic Rupert Mannion has torn into Rebecca's heart and life yet again. Rebecca recounts to Ted years of verbal abuse, body and image shaming, and the threat, if you leave me, you will be alone. For some reason on this night, Rebecca comes face to face with this apparent reality. The prediction of being alone has come true, seemingly, and it's barely audible. You might need to replay the moment to hear it exactly, but Rebecca whispers, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. And and here we find perhaps one of the most important and intimate moments in the show to this point. It is the cry of humanity. We don't want to be alone. You see, we were created for community. We were designed to be loved, to be held, to be touched, to be with others and not born out in isolation. I recently read an article with a longitudinal study from Harvard on the impact of relationships on one's lifespan as sort of a predictive element. Robert Waldinger, director of the study, he's a psychiatrist at Massachusetts General Hospital and also a professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. He's quoted in the article as saying, the surprising finding is that our relationships and how happy we are in our relationships has a powerful influence on our health. Taking care of your body is important, but tending to our relationships is a form of self-care too. That, I think, is the revelation. Going on, he talks about loneliness, and he says, Loneliness kills. It's as powerful as smoking or alcoholism. Well, the Bible speaks to the damaging impact of loneliness. And David writes in Psalm 68, verses 5 through 6, about part of the antidote to loneliness that we feel as human beings. He writes about God. He's a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows. This is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing. The youngest of eight sons, David knew what it was like to be alone. He grew up, as was typical of the youngest in the family, with all the jobs and chores that no one else wanted. He was the lonely shepherd out in the fields by himself, taking care of sheep. Sheep stink. As the youngest son, David's share of inheritance would have been the smallest. His place and significance in the family was least and lowest. David, in a word, knew loneliness like no one else in his family. So we see David write in Psalm 22, 
my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries and my anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. It's important to see, though, that the feelings that David have at the beginning of Psalm 22 are balanced with an important truth. He comes to realize he hasn't been forsaken or abandoned, but God has been nearer to him in spite of what he feels. The same is true for us. We may feel abandoned by God. We may feel forgotten by our closest family, even mom and dad and friends. But the truth is that God will not leave or forsake his people. God's words through the prophet Isaiah in chapter 49, verses 15 and 16, speak a powerful truth to us. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. My friend, today, you may feel like Rebecca. In the midst of the glitz and glam of a gala, In spite of hundreds or thousands that may fill a ballroom or a football stadium, you may feel that you are in a dark, shady back alleyway of life, utterly alone. My friend, you are not alone. God is near. And he waits. Maybe even waiting like an awkward coach lasso, waiting to put his arms around you to show his love to you, to remind you it's okay. You are not alone. I am here, and your name is tattooed into the very palms of my hands. My friend, allow yourself to be swallowed up in that embrace of love. Let yourself know that you are not alone. God is with you. Well, thanks for listening to this lesson from Ted Lasso. This is Reb Brad coming to you from the Touchline. Touchline.